I met a gypsy. So what do you reckon about... So in 2020, Marv was the number one dude Mm -hmm. at KTM. And you hear the stories about Coop basically like to be at the bakery, at the baker's factory. He basically had to like swallow his pride and be like, hey, I know I raced you like a dick on a 250. I know I raced you like a dick on a 250. I know I'm the number two dude. Marv's the number one guy. And then he basically spends the entire first year smoking that whole crew and now he is the he's for sure the number one dude at ktm and if you look at the ktm husky thing i mean he's the number one guy in that whole conglomerate so what is it like to be marv as the guy that you know when dunn's retired you're the you're now the number one guy like he had to play that bridesmaid role to dunge he gets his chance at being the top dog at KTM and then purely based on results that got taken away I mean what does that do to you like does Marv even kind of think that he can be a champion after I guess seeing the way that this whole thing's played out over the last four or five years I think Marv it's a tricky one with Marv because I think we we looked at Marv um he had a full season off like he missed pretty much Mm. a full full year of racing well i think it was a full year something like that but he had a long time off man and i wasn't expecting marv to be as solid in the motocross as what he was like and he was still dealing with pain from from his knee you know so it's tough like he has like he raced dunge he raced dunge for race wins championships like he was a competitive guy i don't know if like obviously coop well, he was under that tent with a number one plate on so like i think pretty maybe, obvious yeah like i think he maybe feels i am the second second tier guy but i don't know i don't think that, that team would allow them to fall into that you know like but being, there's an energy though yeah like you know that when you're oh, the big like, dog no matter, in the playground like there's a vibe man like the team doesn't have to say you're the number one guy you're the number two dude when cooper webb starts marching his way yeah. through and that Coop through is that very like he's confident he carries himself very time. high you know like he's a small guy but when he walks with confidence he's 10 foot tall uh, and I mean you, you hear these stories of like him talking shit on the start line yeah. like crazy and I mean that stuff works dude yeah, like he, you can't you cannot play that stuff down yeah you gotta be very cocky and confident to be able to play that and he does it he does it well and it's worked for him you know so I I don't really have an answer directly on how Marv feels about like being that second tier guy you know but I don't know if Marv is a... I think he's a race winner. I think he can come back and be competitive in Supercross. Like, he's got that... He's got that crafty Frenchman Mm. style about him, you know. Um, There is a lot of young kids coming up now, though. um, So, it's going to be even harder for him. But I don't know if he's going to be a championship. Like, don't get me wrong. He will be a guy that is talked about in this championship. And he will win races. I don't know if he can win a championship again, though. Yeah, I pretty much agree with that. Scroll down a little bit for us there, Ronan. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.